this is the first example we're going to go through. Um, we want to find the area enclosed between these two curves and these two lines. Okay. Now, this should tell you what your limits of integration should be. Not every single problem does have specified limits of integration. In the uh, next few examples, we're going to see that. We're going to have to find our limits of integration by ourselves. So let's go ahead and draw the picture first. So just between pi over 2 and pi, sine is at 1. If I plug in uh, pi over 2 in there, it's at 1. And then at pi, sine is at 0. So like if this is 0, pi over 2 pi goes something like that. Now, y equals x is just a straight line, okay? So here's 2. Pi over 2 is about 1.5. Somewhere, I think it's 1.57. So I actually wanted to draw these in different colors. I apologize. Give me a second. See, this one will be in red. There's 2 pi. This one will be in blue. So about 1.5. And then at pi, if I plug pi into there, I'm at 3, a little bit above 3. A straight line. So I want to find the area enclosed between those curves. I want to find the area of this green shaded part. Right there. So this is a instance of that first case. It's going to be the upper function minus the lower function. And in here, they don't cross anywhere. So we don't have to worry about the absolute value sign. We could see that the upper function is the blue one. That's y equals x. The lower function is the red function, the sine of x. So I could write this as the integral from pi over 2 to pi. The upper function is x minus the lower function sine of x dx. This will successfully compute the area between the two curves. So. This is just undo the power rule, so uh, it's 1 half x squared. This is undo the uh, trig function, un the derivative of negative cosine, or sorry, cosine is negative sine, so antiderivative of this should be cosine of x. We're going to evaluate it at pi and then subtract it, uh, the evaluation at pi over 2. So. 1 half pi squared plus cosine of pi. Just taking pi, plugging it into here, minus 1 half pi over 2 squared plus cosine of pi over 2. So I could erase some things. We don't need the integral sign. See, I'll keep this. Uh, we no longer need the picture, and we don't need the problem. So, bringing this up to here, we got 1 half pi squared plus cosine of pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1. Minus, okay, this minus has to distribute to everything over here. That's why I'm using a bracket. So this is 1 half times pi squared over 4. Squaring it, pi squared, 2 squared is 4. Plus 0, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So I got 1 half pi squared minus 1 minus pi squared over 8. 
putting these two, multiplying these two, we get a denominator of eight. We're almost done. We see some like terms here. If I rewrite this one half as four over eight, now they have least common denominators. So I got four over eight minus one over eight. The final answer is gonna be three over eight pi squared minus one. And that is the area between both those curves, the sine of x curve and the uh, y equals x curve between our two bounds, pi over two to pi. Let's do another example. Y is equal to x squared minus four x. And the other one is y is equal to 2x. So they don't give us the x values that they want us to find the area between. So let's go ahead and graph this ourselves. Oh, something I didn't mention on the last problem. If you're having trouble graphing, and I know I'm doing these by hand, what you can do is plug them into your calculator. So if you see, I plugged in sine x and x. And then I go to my window and I change my window. So my x bounds were from pi, or sorry, pi over 2 to pi. So I literally type in pi divided by 2. There is a pi button. You have to hit your second key and then your caret button right here. And then if you hit enter, it'll change it into the decimal form. And then on the next one, I just did pi. And then you got to play with your y, min, or max so you could see everything. See the entire, uh, both pieces of the graph. And if you hit graph, I mean, there's a lot better picture of what we had drawn up there a moment ago. Okay. Uh, I'll show you the graphs of these ones. Let, let's go ahead and draw it by hand. So this is a parabola. If I were to factor it, you get x times x minus 4. So it has a 0. See, let's use different colors again. It has a, I'll do this one in blue, has a 0 at 0, and it has a uh, 0 at 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Its maximum is going to occur here. Uh, if I plug in 2 to here, uh, 2 squared is 4 uh, minus, hmm. Oh, it's supposed to be going like that. It's a minimum. It's a minimum. So it should be at negative 4. Negative 1, 2, 3, 4. Something like that. Now, let me go ahead and draw this one. So it starts at 0, and it goes up 2 over 1. Up 1, 2 over 1. Up 1, 2 over 1, up 1, 2, over 1, up 1, 2, I ran out of room. But eventually they're going to intersect way up there. So you can see the area between the two curves that we're talking about. It's all that green area that I shaded. Of course, we're missing some up there because I ran out of room. And in this one, this is a case where you've got an upper function minus a lower function. They don't intersect everywhere. So what we're going to do is find the integral, start at 0. We still got to find our upper limit. We haven't done that yet. The upper function is 2x minus the lower function. Now, this is... Very important, you have to put parentheses around your lower function. Brackets, dx. Because it's minus the entire function. It's f of x minus g of x. Don't forget to distribute the negative into the, uh, the whole function. I could see that being a very common mistake. So now let's find our upper limit. To find our upper limit, what we have to do is set the equations equal to each other. So x squared minus 4x is equal to 2x. Now just solve. Minus 
Uh, yeah, minus 2x, minus 2x. You get x squared minus 6x equals 0. You could factor an x out. You get x minus 6 times x equals 0. Well, one intersection point is at 0. We see that already. The other intersection point is at 6, way up there. So this is the integral from 0 to 6 of f of x minus g of x. Let's take a look on the calculator real quick. So in my, it doesn't matter which one you plug into y1, y2. Um, x squared minus 4x, that's in my y1. 2x is in my y2. My limits, I'm going from 0. This one I just found was 6, but I'm going to go to 7. Just so we could see the entirety of the graph. My y min, it goes down to negative 4. I'm going to go down to negative 6. So we again, we could see everything down here. My y max, okay? So since this is the upper function, I mean, they intersect at uh, 6. But let's get a bigger view. Our x value is going to 7. Plug 7 into here, 14. So let's make it 14. So if you look at this graph right here, you get that. Now there is some area over here, but this area is going to keep growing bigger and bigger. And it's the area enclosed by that graph. That area is not enclosed by the graphs. We have a starting point here and an ending point there for the, this area. Over here, if you were to keep going, there's no ending point. Uh, so there you go. As you can see, that kind of looks like what we drew right here. So we no longer need the picture or the problem. We have our integral. All we have to do is integrate and evaluate the antiderivative at the endpoints, and we have our area. Uh, so I'm coming way over here. So integral of 2x is x squared minus the integral of here is 1 third x cubed. I'm just undoing the power rule. So all of this evaluated at 6 and evaluated at 0. What's really nice about this problem is that evaluation right there because we're plugging into a polynomial, polynomial, polynomial. We don't have to worry about that one. So really the only answer we need is plug 6 into here, compute the number, and you're done. So this is 6 squared minus 1 third times 6 cubed minus 2 times 6 squared. So this is 36 minus 1 third times 216 minus 72. Now at this point, I'll just grab the calculator, compute this. You could have just grabbed the calculator on that point right there. Uh, 36 minus uh, 1 third times 216 minus 72. I got 72 here. 6 squared is 36. 36 times 2 is 72. I know I just skipped over that. 6 cubed is 216. Um, hit enter. And you get 36. Exactly. So here's our final answer. The area enclosed between those two curves is equal to exactly 36. Let's see. Is 216... 216... Divided by 3 is 72. That's why we get 36. This entire piece right here is 0. It's pretty nice. Uh, let's look at another example. y is equal to 1 over x. y is equal to x. y is equal to 1 fourth x and x is greater than 0. Let's go ahead and draw it. Now we have a lot of functions here. Um, I do have enough colors. So this one will be, this is purple. 
Hopefully you guys could see the purple. Uh, this one will be blue. Hopefully you could see the difference in the blue and purple. And this one will be red. So, the 1 over x graph looks something like this. Let's see, the blue one, the y equals x graph, looks something like that. The 1 fourth x graph looks something like that. So the area that we are talking about enclosed by all of these curves. Now they say x is greater than 0 because if we go x is less than 0, we're going to get the same image. They're all odd functions. So in the negative direction, it's just going to flip over here. We're going to get the same exact thing. Okay, That's what that is saying. So the area that we're talking about is that green triangle right there. Now let me blow up the triangle a little bit um, so we can see something else that's going on. So there's the blue curve. Here's the red curve. And here is the purple curve. Looks something like that. All I did was extract this piece out to there. So our A, let's see, a little black here. Our A starts at zero, so we're at zero. And then over here is our B. So we still have to find our B. Our B is where the red curve intersects the purple curve. And how we found that was we take the red curve, set it equal to the purple curve, we solve. Okay, we will have to do that. But if we want the area for this piece right here, notice that there are two different upper curves. This purple one down here is always the lower curve, but from zero to some value right here, some value C, the blue curve is the upper curve over the purple. And then after C, the red curve is the upper curve over the purple. So in order to compute this integral here, we're going to have to, or to find the area underneath this curve, we're going to have to split the integral up into two pieces. So the first piece, so this is piece one, this is piece two. Let's see, I want to keep everything up here. The first piece is the integral from zero to C of f of my upper function, the blue line, x minus, <laughs> excuse me, x minus uh, the lower curve, which is the purple one here. So 1 fourth x dx. Now I know we could simplify that. Let's not simplify right now. So that's just the area of the first piece. Now the area of the second piece is the integral from c to b, we still got to find those, of the upper curve, which is the red one. So the red one is 1 over x minus 1 fourth x dx. And then all we do is add these two results together. Number one will give me the area of that, number two will give me the area of that. Um, Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go first. Let's go ahead and find C and B, or yeah, C and B. If you notice where C is, C is the intersection of the blue and the red. So let's set the blue and the red equal to one another. So one over x is equal to x. That will give us our C value. Multiply both sides by x. This cancels, you get 1 is equal to x squared, square root both sides, x is equal to plus or minus 1. As I said, this if we were to count the negative over here in the third quadrant, this would just reflect, and it would look exactly the same. That's why we're getting the negative 1. Since x is greater than 0, we only care about the positive 1. So, 
This says C is equal to 1. So we could replace this with the 1. We could replace this with the 1. Now let's go ahead and find B. B is the intersection of the purple curve and the red curve. The purple curve, 1 fourth x, is equal to the red curve, 1 over x. Do the same kind of process. I'm going to multiply this both sides by uh, 4x. Let's see, the x's here cancel, the 4's here cancel. I get x squared is equal to 4. Square root both sides, I get x is equal to plus or minus 2. So plus or minus 2 again, same argument, we'd have 1 in the negative version, but here's the condition, x is greater than 0, we only care about um, the positive form. So b is equal to 2. 1 equal to 2. Now that we have all of our limits and our functions, we can go ahead and compute these areas and find the total area of this triangle. So we don't need anything on the board except for those two integrals right there. So number one, the integral, oh okay, so let's simplify that. It's from zero to one, that's three fourths x dx. Putting together like terms, one fourth, or one minus one fourth is three fourths. So this is equal to undoing the power rule. Go up one power, then divide by that. You're going to get a 3 eighths evaluated from 0 to 1. This one's super easy. Plugging in 0 gives you nothing. Plugging in 1 just gives you 3 eighths. So that was area 1. Now we need area 2. From 1 to 2 of 1 over x minus 1 fourth x dx. Well, the integral of 1 over x is ln x minus, go up 1 power, and then divide by that power. So 1 fourth divided by 2 is 1 eighth. I'm going to evaluate this from 1 to 2. Plugging in 2, you get ln 2 minus 2 squared is 4, 4 divided by 8 is 1 half. Minus, I got to plug in 1. ln of 1 minus 1 eighth. Well, ln of 1 is 0. And now we could get our final answer. Okay, so we've got 3 eighths, and we could put this. So a negative and a negative is a plus 1 eighth. Uh, negative 1 half plus 1 eighth, if I rewrite this as negative 4 eighths, this is going to be equal to negative 3 eighths. So this entire area here is ln of 2 minus 3 eighths. So we've got both of our answers. We just got to find area 1 plus area 2. That's 3 eighths, that was area 1, plus ln of 2 minus 3 eighths, that was area 2. And I just noticed the video paused. Uh, if you were to compute this, I'll stop the video, I'll keep talking so you guys can listen. I don't want to start a new video. But if you were to compute this, um, you're going to notice the 3 eighths cancel, and all you're left with is an ln of 2. So that would be your final answer.